This is the former Nazi concentration camp at Majdanek and as we can see it's located on a huge area of land that's 270 hectares approximately uh, for those of you who know anything about golf, that's about three and a half championship uh, <laughs> golf courses. Absolutely enormous area and a lot of it can't be seen from where I'm actually standing now. It's hidden or houses have actually been built on top of it such as we see over here. Indeed, houses have been very, built very close to one of the areas where the Nazis actually used for burning the bodies of the victims. They, there's a ho hollow in the ground uh, and using railway lines to make a, um, a, gri a grid, a grill I could even say, uh, to use a rather co colloquialism. Uh, the bodies were then set alight using methanol or waste oil or other, other uh, flammable substances. Once they'd burnt, uh, the ashes were used as fertilizer. That area was chosen because the gas chamber, the building we can see uh, there, which is made of brick, uh, was uh, close by. Now, the gas chamber was built in the summer of 1942, so that's after the Nazis had actually uh, murdered the Jewish population of Lublin, so it came a bit late for that. However, it was used for people uh, coming in from other places, such as uh, transports that came in uh, from the Warsaw Ghetto uh, in uh, May of 1943 during the uh, ghetto uprising uh, where people were, were murdered uh, there. The, the building itself is not the same as it was because it was damaged in the storm in 1946 and they put it together again but not quite the way as it was. They joined it to the uh, shower block which is behind it but the two of them uh, weren't actually joined as one building uh, originally. We've got the prisoner area here and uh, that occupies a much a smaller space. It's uh, uh, just over 10% of the size of the camp itself. But even so, uh, it, it's, it's enormous, around 30 hectares or thereabouts. And certainly uh, the original intention was to make it much larger than it is today. Uh, or as it was in 1944, I should really say. So um, each Air, it was divided up into fields, as they're called in German, and it had uh, wooden barracks in there. And uh, at its peak, there were tens of thousands of people uh, could be actually uh, housed there. The objective was to build a camp for a quarter of a million people. That's what Himmler uh, somehow envisioned. Uh, completely absurd idea. Much of the labour that was done in this camp and in other camps was totally pointless. It had no bearing on the Nazi war effort whatsoever and it was just to make people suffer uh, as a whole objective. Indeed, that those who were uh, guards were usually there because they were sadists and not because they knew how to organise labour. Now, in many of my films, I talk about what a nice view people have. This is a constant theme that runs through anything I do, particularly tourist-style films I do, rather than history ones like this. But now, how depressing it must be to get a view of this every single day for the people who live in these flats over here. I must admit, I think I, I find that, that, that really awful. Okay, so I'm interested in history and the Nazi period above all, but I couldn't stand seeing this every day. That would really get me down. Over there is, are the remains of the uh, area where the, the pits where people were murdered on the 3rd of November 1943 following the result bolt in the Sobre War death camp, uh, Himmler ordered the destruction of all the Jews still in uh, captivity in the area. And the 70th anniversary of this killing was yesterday, as today is the 4th of November 1943. But this camp was so close to the 
inhabitants of Lublin. It's, Lublin is much bigger now than it is uh, today, but sorry, than it was then. But all the same, uh, the, the killings were actually visible to people uh, in the town who, who saw perfectly well what was going on. And we see the same thing which happened at Poniatova and Travniki during the Enterfest massacre of the 3rd and 4th of November 1943, where around a total of around 43,000 people were murdered. 18,000 or so of them were actually killed here. That's going to be seen. It really is close to the centre of Lublin. We've got a city bus up there, and that's what we're now going to be taking to get home.